All right. So I'm joined uh, as, as part of the ongoing Northwest Fest 2021 filmmaker interview series. I'm very excited to be joined today by the filmmaker of uh, <laughs> my God, Forevermore. Sorry, it's been one of those mornings. Forevermore, the Angelo Project, Tisa Zito. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Sure, I'm excited to be here. I, I wish you were here in person, I won't lie. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think we're all a little zoomed out. <laughs> And, and longing for that uh, personal collect connection again. But you know what? I'm so excited to have this film in the lineup this year. Um, so before we kind of get into a few of the questions I had, uh, why don't you first tell uh, the folks watching, tell us a little bit about your film. Well, um, it is a, basically a character study about Angela Moore, the lead singer of Fishbone. Um, I, you know, I met him, uh, I think like four years ago now, and I just um, immediately wanted to, uh, to film him. He's just sort of this very interesting character. <clears throat> he exudes a certain creative energy, and I was sort, it was sort of lacking in my life at that time, and I just, um, it was kind of like meant to be. So the film isn't so much a rock doc as it is a character study about the process of an artist and why they're driven to do what they do. Well, that's what I found fascinating about it. I mean, first of all, like, were you a, were you a Fishbone fan even before? No, no so you kind of came I, into this with fresh eyes. Yeah, yeah. I totally, I, <clears throat> it was a, at a performance that I met him because he was with our, our doc fest and um, it was the first time I really, uh, I saw them live and I saw the energy that he kind of put out on stage and then the energy that he had with people as fans. And I didn't, I, I had heard of Fishbone. Obviously I remember that their, their videos in the nineties. Yeah. Um, Pretty Sunshine specifically. And I just, you know, I just kind of stumbled. It just, it just sort of happened. Yeah. That's, I find that fascinating. Um, because a lot of times people will, they'll want to follow a subject because maybe they were, you know, an uber fan to begin with. But I think that's what makes the film so interesting. I mean, Angelo, I think people will realize very quickly once they start watching, he's a force of nature, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so when you started out the process, um, was the film you made the film you started out to make or how did that evolve along the way? Um, well, I guess yes and no, because the main intention was to study him and just sort of be the fly on the wall and give him the, the space to just talk about whatever he wanted. But I did have specific questions that guided because I, I wanted to know certain things, but he just, um, when you talk to Angela, I mean, he just lets it all out. So there's like mm -hmm. there's no filter. There's no, I mean, he literally will just, uh, he doesn't have like a, an agenda. He doesn't really plan things out. He just lets it out. And so that kind of made it um, through the editing process. It was like, we could have gone in a million directions and we could have talked about so many different things like the racial issues. I didn't even that wasn't something that I was planning on putting in there. I thought, oh, sure, it's going to come up. But it came up a lot more than I thought it was going to. Mm. So, um, you know, I wanted to make it balanced. And so I, I tried to really trim it to something that felt felt like a balanced story. That's, uh, that's interesting. Um, because you're, you're right, he does come across as very unfiltered. Um, yeah. Why... I, I don't know if people had approached him in the past, but why did he trust you to tell his story? Um, <clears throat> it's a good question. Uh, he, I don't think he had been approached. Um, he told me that he'd been waiting for someone to make a movie about him his whole life. <laughs> he, he, you know, obviously people have recorded him a million times, but like actually like making a film about him 
um, that hadn't come up yet and he'd been waiting. So it was sort of in the beginning, a process of like, cause I was like, can I make a movie about you? Would you like that? And he was like excited, but then, you know, his loved ones were like, well, who is this person? Mm -hmm. And so there was trust building because, you know, I showed up at his home and his girlfriend was like, you know, come on in. And we just, <laughs> there was some trust building that had to happen. Yeah, I, I imagine. And, and like, how much did you, there's a lot, there's a pretty wide breadth of, of material in the film. How much, how much or how, for how long did you, did you film with him? Um, I drove out there and spent like a solid week with him the first time. Like we filmed just all day until like I couldn't move anymore. <laughs> 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 and then I stayed in the hotel and I would just show up early. We'd film all day and just do whatever. And then I went back the next summer and I think it was a similar bout of time. And then he ended up coming to Utah to do a fish on show, which was just lucky because I didn't see that happening. And all of a sudden the week before he said, I'm going to be in your town. And I was like, okay, well... <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> you know. So then I jumped on that to get like Norwood, which I thought was an essential. Um, like when I got that interview, I was so happy because it felt like it, I had closed like the circle of what was necessary to tell. Wow. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the film, obviously, um, because of his passions, uh, really, um, I mean, I think the thing that is really conveyed, uh, especially is the the power of art um and i mean he is such a singular artist you hear this you hear people describe this way like so often but it's really true i i think from watching the film from not having ever met him in person from just watching him on film on your film he is he is just a singular he's a one of a kind he really is yes. um but it really shows the, the, the power and urgency of art. And I wanna kind of tie that into, you know, what we're going through right now in the past year, how important is that message, do you think right now? Well, I think it's, I mean, I think it's very important, you know, um, just looking at the way my friends have kind of handled uh, COVID lockdown, politics, um, in general, I would say that the artists are faring the best in dealing with life because they're creating and they're moving forward and they're trying to make something to express themselves. And a lot of the people who are struggling right now are not those types of people. They're just kind of stuck and they have no like outlet. So um, if I didn't have this film, I mean, I probably would have caught up on a lot of cleaning, but I mean, it kept me jam packed busy for over three years. And during the whole COVID thing, I mean, I, I was able to like just channel it. Um, and so all of my artist friends have really flourished because they've had this time that they didn't have before. So. Well, I think, uh, especially in times of economic crisis or not, um, I find a lot of times art and culture uh, can be viewed as not as an important, not as an essential service. But I, I, I think that's quite the opposite, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, we, I mean, we need art. I mean, even just whether it's, you, whether you get it through music or, or films, I mean, it's what, uh, it's the lifeboat for us. What people viewing and that been consuming it and then creating it. It's just, it's what makes the world go round, I think. Mm -hmm. Now you, uh, you know, you're one of the lucky ones here to be uh, putting a film out into the world at a time when all the movie theaters are closed. Yeah. <laughs> have, <laughs> have you, I guess, two part question. Um, how weird has it been for you to be sending your film to all these festivals that you can't actually attend in person? And the second part of the question is, have you had the opportunity to watch the film with an audience in a theater at all? Um, I have not uh, had the opportunity to watch it in the theater. I think I will, uh, the first time will probably be at Doc Utah here in November. Okay. Local. 
but um and because of traveling and things like that but um it's been weird like as soon as it happened it was like as i was trying to get funding and it everything just went you know like there was no money going out everything was unknown and it was like you just got all those messages like right now we're, we're unsure and i was like not right now <laughs> like this is when so it um you know to use my least favorite saying in the world, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> like, as Jerry Seinfeld said, it's like blowing hot air in, in your face. But like, uh, there's just, um, it's, it, you just kind of roll with the punches, you know what I mean? What are, um, what are some of the key takeaways or, uh, that you hope people get from watching Angela's story? Um, I think I wanted people to know about him and just know what a, what a cool guy he is and how much effort he puts into to making the world a better place. I mean, he really does. You know, he ever since he was a kid, he's just been uh, focused on moral issues and, and right and wrong and, and justice. And um, I think having people know him who don't already, that was something I wanted. Um, and then the importance of art, which you touched upon, and, and thinking about why, you know, for me, it was kind of an exploration and why an artist, as I said before, why do they even do it? Like, mm. every artist wakes up, they have this, like, internal clock that's constantly ticking, and they are, like, hyper aware of passing time and what they can get done and like they're just very focused I don't think like normal people are <laughs> in tune with that like of how you know um, how kind of like regimented we actually are on the right inside. so because I mean you in order to accomplish anything you have to be diligent and like um, you know set and scheduled and you can't just so I just, I wanted to kind of draw attention to, to that or at least find the answer um, for myself. I don't know if that makes sense. But. It does make sense. I also, uh, I like the fact that, you know, like you mentioned, I think a lot of us were aware of Fishbone. Like my wife was quite a Fishbone fan. Um, I was never a huge, I was really aware of them because I, I worked in record stores and in the music industry in the 90s. So like you couldn't avoid Fishbone. And I saw them at Lollapalooza believe it or oh. not. I mean, yeah. So um, like I've seen them, like I was aware, but that's what I found so fascinating about your film is I knew it's like, I knew the band, but I definitely didn't know the man. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I think thought... a lot of people know the band. Yeah. When I, when I, um, you just reminded me like when I saw the band perform and they showed uh, Everyday Sunshine, the film, um, I just thought, the story's here with this guy, like he believed, like Angelo, he's the story, like he's the one I want to follow. And so it wasn't so much about the, dynam the, the dynamics of the band that interested me, it was, it was him, so. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I, think, I think that's, that's, like you said, it's, it really is a character study of this really fascinating artist that probably most people just knew you know, if they're aware of the band, they just knew as the singer in, in this band, um, but not as this like really intense, uh, you know, innovative, charismatic artist <laughs> who, who, yeah, he's, he's, um, you, you can't take your eyes off him. So I can't imagine what it was like in close quarters with a camera following him, you know, for so long, uh, getting yeah. wrapped up in that energy. <laughs> yeah. Um you know, I, I, I think it came through. There was moments, like, I certainly could have played it up more, but, like, in the very beginning, there's just, like, you know, everything with Angelo takes a lot of time, you know, because he's just sort of very scattered. And so, like, mm. moving from point A to point B becomes, like, this major process <laughs> at the beginning. Because it's real. This, this is real. Like, you know, he's locking the door, like, for the third time. And I just couldn't help but laugh sometimes. And I kept that in because <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, and uh, like, really, here's the, probably the most important question is, um, what does he think of the film? 
thankfully he loves it because, um, you know, Angelo can be hard to please sometimes. Like he's got high standards. And I was just, I mean, I literally put everything I had into this uh, financially, artistically, like energy wise. And I was like, he hadn't seen it until a couple weeks ago. When wow. It, yeah, that was it. There was no, I never showed him clips. I just was like, I showed him one clip as like a, a teaser that we use, but, but he hadn't had no idea. He just only saw the trailer and he, and he liked the trailer. And so he loved the film and so did his mother and his wife and that made oh. me happy. Oh like, yeah. What a relief. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hey, yeah. <laughs> what's the, um, uh, you know, you mentioned hopefully a theatrical screening coming at, up in November and let's hope really by the fall, things are really starting to open up. And I know in the United States, I, I think what did I saw, I, I read last week, something like 57% of movie theaters are, are reopened again now. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think we're just going to, um, what, what's the, uh, the long-term kind of not mm -hmm. long-term, the, the, the six month to one year plan, especially for anybody watching the film now who'd like to you know spread the word about it. Well, um, I'm still waiting to hear back from a series of festivals. And then once those kind of trickle in, um, hopefully it'll get into some of those. And uh, there's some, you know, distributor, emails that I've received, you know, some people are curious about it and they want to see what it is. Um, there's nothing solid in place yet, but my hope is to show it in festivals. I'm sort of like out of funds for that, you know, putting it into more. It's like, you kind of have to make a decision like, okay, we're done. But I hope to at least six more to eight more months of maybe festivals, something like mm -hmm. that. And hopefully it gets picked up by a distribution and I can, you know, and then fans can see it that way. But if they go to Facebook, that's where all the updates are made. Okay. Good. Yeah, and that's um, I, people. I think a lot of people don't realize the. Uh, I mean, you could you could literally win a fifty million dollar lottery and use all of that money just on film festival submission fees. Yeah, yeah, I spent a lot of money <laughs> on that. <laughs> And it's like, you know, at a certain point, you just got to call it. I don't know, you know, so I'll, uh, some more, but probably not like, you know, a ridiculous amount more. But. Right. <laughs> yeah. You have to draw the line somewhere and hopefully get it uh, in front. Of, I mean, hopefully get it to the point where you can see it with an audience. I mean, that would just be, yeah. be wonderful to be able to have that experience, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, we'll just tell people to find you on social media and they can. Yeah, and it will be that it's going to be in, a, in some more festivals for sure. I do know that like Doc Utah. Um, there's one I'm not allowed to say yet that's over in overseas. Great. Um, but yeah, as it as it unfolds, I'll just update that and then hopefully I can get it like to market so people can just see it, you know. I think you will. It's, it's a tremendously entertaining film. It really is. Uh, Angelo is, I mean, yeah, I mean, I went into this film cold thinking, okay, the guy from Fishbone and it just blew me away as I think I probably told you the first time I emailed you back after I'd watched it. So I'm really thrilled to have it, uh, in this year's festival. I'm really, really thrilled. You were able to take some time to chat with us and, uh, I hope, uh, our fans here love, fall in love with Angelo and your film as much as I did. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. Hopefully next time it can be in person. Yeah. Thanks, Tisa. Tisa Zito, Forevermore, The Angelo Project, streaming at northwestfest.ca from May 6th to the 16th. Get your tickets now. Thanks, everyone.